Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth video in our series of videos on the plantations. As always we begin with our learning outcomes so by the end of this presentation you guys should know the steps the English took that led to the Ulster Earls rebellion in 1594. You guys should know the course of the Nine Year War and finally you guys should know what the flight of the Earls was. We have seen how the Offaly, Leash and Munster plantations met with very limited success. But now we will turn our attention to the plantation that will be very successful and change the island of Ireland forever, the Ulster plantation. In this video, we will look at the events that led to the English being able to plant what was the most Gaelic of areas at the time. We mentioned in the previous video how Queen Elizabeth had already wanted to plant Ulster, but it was a, f a complete failure. And then her attention was distracted when the Desmonds or Geraldine Rebellion broke out. This initial attempt to plant Ulster was caused by the actions of Shane O'Neill or Shane the Proud of Tyrone, who was consistently fighting with Queen Elizabeth and all the Gaelic Irish in Ulster. After Shane was eventually defeated by the fellow Gaelic Irish and his head sent to the Lord Deputy in the Pale, where it was placed on a pike over Dublin Castle, the English turned to plant the parts of Ulster that Shane had ruled in the 1570s. But these attempts by Sir Thomas Smith, who was the Queen's Privy Councillor, and the Earl of Essex ended in their own ruin and did nothing to reduce the power of the Gaelic lords. However, the English were ready to try again in the late 1580s after dealing with the Munster Rebellion. They first implemented a new policy in Connacht known as the Compositions of Connacht. This happened in 1585. In the Composition of Connacht, tenant farmers would now pay money for their rent uh, to their lords instead of services who would in turn pay taxes to the English crown and follow English laws instead of being able to raise their own forces from their lands. These great landlords could no longer be independent warlords. English attempts to gain, gain greater control of the powerful Gaelic lords in Ulster really started with the capture of a 15-year-old Red Hugh O'Donnell, who was the son of the Lord of Tyrconnell, or Donegal, in 1587. He was imprisoned and kept in Dublin Castle. They also sent Hugh O'Neill, the grandson of the first Earl of Tyrone, who had submitted to Henry VIII in his surrender and grant policy, to rule Tyrone. They did this in 1585. He, um, Hugh O'Neill had been raised in the Pale and he'd been given an English education in the hope that he would be more cooperative with English rule. However, Hugh O'Neill proved himself to be a very independent-minded person and he decided to plan the escape of Red Hugh O'Donnell on Christmas Eve of 1592. This was his attempt to bind the two most powerful clans in Ireland together after centuries of fighting. And it wasn't long before this alliance was called into action. The English had begun to try to expand their influence in 1590 when the Lord Deputy attacked the McMahon family of Monaghan. They defeated the leader of the McMahons and they divided his land between five different families within the McMahon clan. This meant that they weren't strong enough to rebel as they were divided and would have to rely on the Pale for protection. This policy was known as a native plantation. It was so successful they did it again with the O'Reilly clan in East Breffney, which was then renamed County Cavan. They did it with the O'Rourke clan in West Breffney, which was then renamed County Leitrim. And in 1594, they launched an attack on the Maguires of Fermanagh. And it was here that the Maguire clan leader, Hugh Maguire, reached out to Hugh O'Neill of Tyrone and Red Hugh O'Donnell of Tyrconnell. Hugh was very clearly a very popular name at this time. This started an event known in Ireland as the Nine Years' War. Hugh O'Neill had employed himself with a large number of Scottish mercenaries who were quite famous at the time, known as Gallo Glasses. Soon after this, the Macdonalds of Antrim joined after being attacked by the English, and O'Neill had brought together the squabbling clans of Ulster to stage what was to be the most 
dangerous Irish rebellion Queen Elizabeth ever faced. In 1598, the Gaelic clans defeated the largest army brought to Ulster in a long, long time, a force of up to 4,000 men at the famous Battle of Yellowford. After this victory, rebellion broke out throughout the country and the Munster plantation completely collapsed. Even the Pale itself was under threat. Elizabeth poured nearly all of her money into crushing the Irish. She raised and equipped an army of 17,000 men. The man eventually chosen to defeat the Irish was the brutal Lord Mountjoy, who planned to break the rebellion by starving the people. By 1600, Mountjoy was having a lot of success and he had recovered most of the country, except for Ulster. He attacked and he destroyed everything that he could, trying to starve and terrorise the population into submission. However, he had to break off this assault when news arrived that finally, after failed attempts in 1596 and 1597, the Spanish had arrived in Ireland. Unfortunately, it was doomed from the start. The Spanish landed here at Kinsale in the south of Ireland, but one of the commanding officers of the fleet refusing to sail here to Killybegs in Tyrconnell, which would have been a much better place to land strategically. That same commander then abandoned the expedition, leaving only 4,000 troops who were stranded inside the walls of Kinsale. The Spanish sent urgent messages for help and the men of Ulster marched 3,000 miles in the dead of winter to get to the Spanish. You can see on the map here the route taken by the O'Donnells from Tyrconnell and from the O'Neills of Tyrone. Eventually the large Irish forces were defeated by the English on Christmas Eve of 1601. The rebel forces were completely smashed. Red Hugh O'Donnell died in Spain in 1602, appealing for more help from the Spanish. Hugh O'Neill tried to negotiate with Elizabeth, but he she initially rejected these overtures. By 1603, however, she offered him a pardon. O'Neill went to Mellifont Abbey, where the Treaty of Mellifont was signed, ending the war. O'Neill was really shocked by the good terms which allowed him to keep his title and most of his lands, but he didn't know at the time that Queen Elizabeth had died days earlier and Lord Mountjoy wanted to make sure that the treaty was signed. Elizabeth was replaced as Queen by her cousin, the King of Scotland, who became King James I of England. He would be the first of the Stuart Kings. The Irish hoped that James being Scottish would be more sympathetic to them, but James decided on a policy of persecuting the Catholics and constantly undermining the Earl of Tyrone and the Gaelic Lords. The Irish Earls decided to leave Ireland to try to get help in Europe after O'Neill was nearly discovered plotting against James I. They looked for somebody in Europe to come and send an army to support them. They eventually died in exile, never to return to Ireland. And this event is known as the Flight of the Earls. And when they left, the English confiscated their lands. And in the next video, we will see what they did with these lands. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So by now, you guys should know the steps the English took that led to the Ulster Earls Rebellion in 1594. You guys should know the course of the Nine Year War. And finally, you guys should know what the flight of the Earls was. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something good from this video.